Hi! I'm glad you joined me this afternoon because I have sort of a special treat for you. Um, it's going to be doing artwork that, that I've showed you the last couple times we've been together, only this has a direct application. Um, you can see this little little critter down here on my, my drawing board. Um, it's a painting I did for a book illustration, um, which led to a whole series of drawings being the illustrator for an Indianapolis artist named Diane Banks. And she had a, a dream of writing some books involving her dog. Her little dog is the main character. So fate led us together and she wrote the books and I did the illustration. Um, the first one is called Squirt Gets a New Home. She, her own dog is named Hershey and she wanted to use that name in the book, but the Hershey company didn't think that was a good idea. So the character was renamed Squirt. And it's the story of adopting a little puppy um, to relate to children who might be going through that same experience. So the first thing we had to do was um, develop a character to be the puppy. And this is the first drawing I did of that. Um, I'll show you a few of the other illustrations so you can get the drift of the story. They got the dog originally from a farm in Ohio, and this was the litter of, of the puppies. I really do like this illustration because they look, they look really cute, and that's the idea. Um, here's the puppy being brought home, wrapped in his very own blanket. And he learned he wasn't supposed to play and chew on people's slippers. The puppy loved to run and play, and sometimes it felt like flying. And we made up this character to be the, the lady. It was a man and a lady who were old and lonely, so they got the puppy. And this is when the puppy comes to their house. And this illustration ended up being the cover of the book. And it really is cute. If you've ever cuddled a puppy, you know how they snuggle and slurp all over you. And this was the very last. There were more illustrations, but that was the very last one in the book. So I show you the illustrations because if you make a character, it has to be able to move and change and adapt with the story. So that requires a little bit of knowledge of what you're trying to draw. Um, I've had dogs my whole life, so it's kind of second nature, and it was really a pleasure. So we're going to draw, I'm going to draw, hopefully you'll draw along, um, this little puppy and show how you think about doing it and then how to paint it using the same te technique I've shown you in the last couple times we were together. So first of all, let me go back to my original one. You'll notice that the puppy's head and its body are the same size. The head is that big and so is the body. Um, because in any little creature, their heads are born just like little our little babies. The heads are born almost close to adult size if the body is not. So we'll start with a circle that we're going to adapt. And I won't do the body yet till I get the the head the way I want it. And about if I'm looking at the top part of the head. Here's the snout or the muzzle that comes out from a dog. So if I'm looking at the between the mouth and the top of the head, about halfway is where the eyes are going to be. Um, and once you get the eyes in place, then everything else can gauge from that. Can you put that on your palette? And then we'll see it. Oh, that's a good idea. There, now you get good idea from my, my executive producer here. So I'm gonna mark about halfway. And I'm gonna bring in the edges because the fluffy hair on his muzzle goes out much more. Um, you'll also notice on the drawing that because of the way his hair grows, he actually has a little peak on the top of his skull that makes it look distinctly like this little dog. So, the real dog, Squirt or Hershey, has very beady little eyes that are really bright. 
And that's the first thing you notice about him. So I'm going to put the eyes in first. Everything else then will measure from that. Uh, I think I got that a little bit too close. Erasers are an artist's best friend, you know. They're called mind changers. There, that's a little bit better. Okay, now his muzzle starts about right here and then flares out to the side. Now, to find out where his nose fits with his eyes, this is a really handy technique. You lay the pencil right on the outer edge of the eye and the nose. Keep that same angle. So I know it needs to be somewhere right in there. Do the same thing on the other side. And it's gonna be about right there. Now I know because I've got some sort of perspective on it where I'm gonna make that little nose. That's a handy technique no matter what you're drawing. If it's a, a building, a landscape, anything, you can do that to compare sizes, angles, and distances. Okay, now right below his nose is where the muzzle actually shows a separation in the way the, way the hair grows, the structure of it. That's true on any dog. And then right below that is the little mouth and his tiny little chin that angles back up on both sides. There, now I can take away these outside lines for now. I don't need those anymore. And we'll add his ears. Now, how high are the ears. Again, I can use that same measuring technique. His ear starts about right there. Same thing over here, right there. So I'll add on the shape of the ears, which are big, long, and floppy in this kind of dog. And add an ear over here. Okay, now I'm going to somewhat lay in the way the hair grows. He, this is a very fluffy, curly dog. I should tell you, I think he's a cockapoo. Um, and his, so his mother was a cocker spaniel, and his father, uh, the big size poodle. I'm not sure, is that called standard poodle? And he had lots of fluffy all over, curly fluffy. Still does, as a matter of fact. Now, the expression on the eyes is really important. I don't think dogs have eyebrows, but I added one in this character because I needed to be able to show expression, surprise or being devilish or whatever. And just like the eyes we drew last week, you need to leave a reflection of light or it doesn't look like a real animal. And though this is more of a cartoonish version, it's still the same. I covered that over with pencil line. There's a white part. And then he's got curly hair that goes all the way up through here. And along the edges, I made little curly and little fluffy hair too, because otherwise he'll look too slick and too smooth and we don't want that to happen. Okay, now, oh, forgot this stuff right here. Now I'm gonna add his body. Remember I said the body is the same um, size, just about as the head, I had to think of the right word. So I measure. Come down here. That encompasses where he sits on the ground. So here's where he's going to be sitting. I just bring out the little shoulders and those little puppy legs that come down. Now on this side, I can see a little bit of his round tummy. His little belly is back there. 
And when you're drawing, it's a good idea to be aware of the structure. That bone in a dog actually comes right down through there. It's got some solidity to it, even though he's fluffy and little. Paws on puppies are not as formed, obviously, as adult dogs. And then I need to add all that curly, fluffy hair. Who doesn't love a puppy? And on this side, same thing. His little chest isn't very big yet. And one more little paw. There's a little squirt. Okay, now I'm gonna ink him in very quickly and then we'll talk about the painting. What about his belly? Oh yeah, thank you, I forgot his belly. Right here. Thank you. Now the inking part is easy. Because the looser and freer you are, the more it looks dog-like. The reason I know where to draw these little curly hairs is because I had pictures of Hershey to look at. It was hard to get, <clears throat> excuse me, hard to get a good picture because he bounces around so much still. Now we better put nostrils in too. Now I add the Fluffy, curly, just keep thinking that as you draw. All dogs have patterns in the direction that their hair grows, and they're distinctive to each breed. That's one of the secrets of drawing them and painting them and making them look authentic, if you will. We'll bring that other ear down. You're not drawing hair by hair. You're just giving the impression of. Put a little lower lip down there. Okay, now we'll come and add his fluffy little coat out here. As you can imagine, he's very, very soft to pick up and cuddle. Though he's so squirmy now, it wouldn't be as easy <laughs> because he's obviously not a puppy anymore. We started this project about two years ago and Diane did three books Two of them are printed and available at Amazon. The third one's to come out this spring, I think. And Squirt is the main character in all of them, though he gets little, a lot of friends as he goes, and I'll be show, sharing some of that with you too. There. Okay, now let's put some paint on this little guy. The colors I used in this one, though you may have noticed when I showed you some of the other illustrations, um, he changed color. We made him a little bit darker. I'm gonna paint this one as a, the way I did the first one with a lighter color, though the colors are the same. This one just had more of the brown in it. Um, I have to wet my palette. Ah. 
I'm not going to use all the colors. I guess this is just habit. I'm going to use two colors primarily. And they're excellent for making earth tones or animal tones. The first one is burnt sienna. So I'll pull some of that out into the onto the palette. And the second one, which I don't need out right now, is ultramarine blue. There's a reason, not just because I want the dog to look like a dog, but in really simple color theory, um, blue and orange are across from each other on the color wheel. And what that means is they can neutralize each other if they're mixed together. And that's also how I get the darks, the black, for the eyes and the deep dark places behind the ears. It's just mixing the two together. Pretty slick, huh? You don't have to use another color. That means everything is unified because of your color selection. So I want a very light tone. So I'll add more water. Let's see, we'll pull up a little. My brush strokes go the same way that the hair would grow. And I'm also gonna leave quite a bit of white. That's one of the trademarks of watercolor painting. The tissue. He has some light color on his muzzle. I want this to look fluffy. I want it to look light. So that's how I make my strokes. And even lighter down here. Now down on the ears. Over here. Again, I'm stroking just the way the hair grows, the way I drew it. Now, you'll notice in the original one, there's dark behind the ears where it moves around the muzzle. And there's, his hair was colored darker on these little angles down from the eye. That was That's part of the dog's coloration, so. To make that darker tone, I'm going to pull out some ultramarine blue. Now mix the two together a little bit. See how the color becomes more neutralized? There we go. I want a little bit darker. One of the best, hardest things to learn about watercolor, I think, is the amount of water on your brush. So I always have a tissue or paper towel in my hand to control that. Okay, I'm going to put the darker value here. It creates a shadow back there. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to make that little shadow not quite as dark. From his eyes, it goes back into the. Into the ears. Maybe I better lift a little bit. I didn't want it quite that dark. Okay, now we'll go down on his body. I need to pull out some clean burnt sienna. Add a lot of water so it's light. I'm pulling this out with water now to keep it lighter. A little bit of extra right there.
And even though I've put the paint down, I can pull it with water to make it lighter. Now his tummy is quite white, light, excuse me. So I don't want a whole bunch of pigment down there. Come over to the back over here. Just for contrast, I'm gonna darken that a little bit. A little darker on the edges and pull the color down. And make his paws just a little darker on the edge. No special reason, I just think it'd look better. Now I'm gonna make his behind where he's sitting in the darker gray. Again, it's not very dark, whoops, too dark. That has the effect of pushing it back. Now the last thing we're gonna do is paint his nose and his eyes. That's the fun part, of course. Have to make his mouth a little bit darker. That means I have to mix up a black. So if you take the blue and the orange and mix them together in equal amounts, you'll get a rich black color. Most watercolor painters I know don't use black out of a tube, they mix their own. You can use it out of it, you can make it out of any two colors that are across from each other on the color wheel. There, see the black? Kind of like magic, isn't it? Now I don't want very much water on my brush. In fact, I'm gonna get a littler brush which gives me more control. And it's dry enough up there, I can do that. I don't wanna lose that white spot, but if I do, I can paint a dot of white on it. Doesn't he look like he wants to be adopted? He's pretty cute. Okay, now let's paint his nose black. There's something about the way puppies smell. It's so great if you like puppies and if you like dogs. The sweet smell of them. Almost done. Then I'm gonna put just a little bit of a gray just above his nose. Okay, now to anchor him on the ground, you'll see I did a little bit of blue just to make it look like he's sitting. If you don't add that, it's like he's levitating forever. So I'll just take pure blue, maybe just a touch of the brown. Bring it right up underneath. Get a little bit of water. There. That was quick and dirty, but we're done. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's the first rendition of Squirt. I'll show you some, uh, I showed you illustrations from the first book. Um, and the second one is called Squirt Goes on a Mission. And Squirt goes to the hospital and becomes a therapy dog. Um, and let's see here. This illustration. Oh, excuse me. This illustration showed him coming to the hospital for the first time. 
see, he's a little bigger now, so I had to make him into a bigger, older dog. Now he wasn't a puppy. Here he is doing what therapy dogs do, comforting people who are lonely and scared and in pain. And then the rest of the book focuses on other dogs. I didn't, I haven't got all of the illustrations, but these are some of my favorites. This is the um, Dalmatian that goes on the fire engines. This, this one I'm going to show you turned out really well. The dog, the Rottweiler that works with the military. I really liked how powerful he emerged from my brush. This was rescue dogs in the mountains when people who are skiing get lost. There's just a couple of them for you to see. So thank you for joining me this afternoon, and I hope you take a moment to go on Amazon and see the books from my friend Diane Banks. Um, the two that are there now are Squirt Gets a New Home and Squirt Goes on a Mission. The third one is about Squirt going on a walk, and he meets all the different kinds of dogs that you find anywhere from all different countries. So the backstory is about um, acceptance of all different kinds of, of dogs or people. So thanks for joining me this afternoon. I enjoyed it.